there right now. And spawning over to the top left hand position as the Red Zerg is Acer Scarlet. All the way down in the bottom right hand corner, the blue Protoss. It's Root for Root Puck. Root for Root. I feel like um, just overall the Root players have a very distinct style, no matter who it is. Um, just all of them have a very cat-like feel to them. Uh, I guess that's kind of fair to say. I think they all have their own unique style, personally right. to them too. I guess I'm not sure what you mean by a cats-like feel, but well, who else has this, the same style as cats? Well, no one but cats. But I don't know why. I don't know how you're saying that Puck has the same style. You don't think Puck and cats have similar styles? Mm, not exactly. I think Puck's a lot more predictable. He has kind of his own way of playing the game. Cats, he he does have his own style, but he likes to do a, a lot of kind of builds that are a bit of a bit That's out there. I feel like the team is just made of very cerebral players, right? They play the players more than the matchups overall. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say closer to the other side would be Vibe, Minigun maybe. Uh, but even he, I feel like, does play to the players. In the past, he's kind of standardized a lot, a lot. Um, over time, but we'll see how Puck actually plays this out. Now, remember, the standard is to go gateway expand on this map. We've seen that time and time again, and Puck refuses to do that. I mean, I don't know. Uh, you know, there's some people's train of thoughts that say, don't do Forge expansion anymore. It's terrible. But some people are saying, no, it's still very, very viable, even though that a lot of this stuff is predictable. You can do so many different mind games. What's your thought on Forge Fast expansion whenever you see it? I actually think it's pretty good currently. I think the metagame has changed quite a bit in the past couple months. Maybe like three to four months ago, everyone was saying Gateway Expand was the way to go. But I think nowadays, Zerks have figured out a lot better how to play against it. And we've seen Forge Expand start to come back a lot lately. I almost feel like Forge Fast Expansion is just 10 times safer, especially looking at your games against Max Head on this very map. I felt like there are so many different problems with the Gateway Expand. You assume way too much, and you really don't want to commit a probe so early to, to scout. Mm -hmm. And um, on some maps like this, the other thing about it is you have to make a wall off with three gateways on this map if you want to do a Gateway Expand, and that kind of gives away what you're going to do to some extent. So I can see why Protoss players will go for Forge Expand on this map. Gotcha. And on other maps too, so. Gotcha, gotcha. Well... You know, I'm personally a big fan of Forge Fast Expand. Uh, Look at this. Do you, do you see, sorry to interrupt, but do you see this probe Puck's hiding? It's kind of a clever spot here. I have no clue. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe if Scarlet doesn't have a uh, unit hit point bars on, she can just walk right past that probe, not see it. Only so. I don't know what this probe is going to do. Probably just a proxy pylon for now, but we'll see. And it's just nicely tucked right outside of that tower range. Scarlet will not be able to find that out. As it stands, very standard play coming out from both these players. It is a fast three hatcheries after a pool uh, coming out from Scarlet for yeah. Puck. I mean, nothing nothing too crazy. Yeah, it's just standard play we're seeing from both players so far. Um, talking a bit more about this probe hiding spot, though, I think this is the perfect spot to hide a probe. I actually have not seen a Protoss hide a probe in this sp specific position. And Scarlet, she's scouting around everywhere with these two links, but she hasn't seen this probe. And I think, I think that's what makes it good, obviously. If Zerg players don't know to look for it, that's where you want to hide it. Well, now every Zerg player will always look for there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we'll see. The first Zealot has popped out, and again, we see it pushing out. Plus one has been initiated right now, so it can be there for some eight-minute timings, but I don't think we're going to see that. Simulator is going down. Two Simulator is going down, so this is the exact same build that we saw Puck do last game. It's a very safe, comprehensive way to play it out. As you can see, Sentry is popping out directly after this. Mothership Core is very delayed. And no tech has been chosen just yet. And this probe still hidden away. You're absolutely right, Ghost User. This is such a good place to put it right now against Scarlet. Yeah, because it's good because the w if there's a Zergling in this watchtower that the Zealot's at, that won't see it. And if you go up that ramp like she just did, you won't see it either. So I think it's the perfect position. Ghost User, have you ever studied a player so much? and then just found out all their probe hiding spots and just hard countered those areas? Um, not too much against Protoss players. Usually when I play against the Protoss, what I look for is where they put the tech buildings when they go for each specific strategy. So I know when, where to send the Overlord in. Oh, I see. That's pretty clever. 
Makes a lot of sense, too. Uh, it looks like Puck has maximized a lot of these probes. The probe saturation on the natural is really nice. And kind of stopped overall. Getting uh, one more probe here and there. Uh, robotics facility has been placed and additional gateways. Four total gateways are being placed. This will be an Immortal All-In or something similar to an Immortal All-In. I'm think, expecting a Twilight Council, of course. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Twilight Council will come down pretty soon. A lot of players do the Immortal on without a Twilight Council, without Blink, but this is how Puck likes to play it. And you kind of see this every game on ladder against Puck. I don't know how much North American ladder Scarlet play th plays, though, so maybe she won't be prepared for it. Yep, we'll see. I mean, it is eight gateways, though, right now. So I'm not sure. Uh, the first Immortal has popped out already. The pylon has been placed over the middle left-hand position. And is this just going to be an off time where it's like, yeah, I push out with one Immortal and that's it? Yeah, it's just going to be a one Immortal push out with a lot of gateway units. Holy moly. I I don't think I've ever seen this before. Yeah, I think this could work out well, but he has to hit pretty soon. Yeah. If Scarlet manages to get a high enough link count out that she can surround all these units, it could be troublesome. Even if you have some Zealots, if Zerg has enough Zerglings, they can surround the Immortal and the Sentries. And then from there, it's kind of hard for Protoss. That's right. Metabolic Boost has already finished up here, so his Zerglings will be able, or excuse me, it has not, but it's about to. Uh, so he will be able to surround his opponent pretty soon here. Spine Crawler going to be placed, Zerglings getting into position. Puck going to have to back up from here until he gets a little bit more. Oh, Sentry's caught out of position. He's going to section off a lot of this army Good and kill seals. these Zerglings. Yes, indeed. Uh, four, four seals were expended in that. He still has a lot of force fields left as well. I think he has a chance of making this work. There's a spine crawler on the way. That'll help a lot if he gets up, but it's still about 30 seconds. From oh, oh. Roaches are going to be sectioned off here. Two of them die, as along with one of those Zerklings. Additional sentries are going to be placed right now. And a third base is going to be plopped down. Now, it is in range of this one Overlord. So Scarlet kind of knows, okay, this is going to be fake aggression. I just have to get enough units so that he stops pushing in on me. And then from here, I can just start teching, right? I have that income now to, to allocate towards tech. We'll see how Scarlet goes about that. Income tab showing 62 harvest, 54. So Puck in a pretty nice place overall. Yeah, I think Puck's in a pretty good position. I think we're just gonna see him add on more immortals, more gateway units, maybe get that Twilight Council pretty soon and start blink. And I think that's a, it's a pretty good position for him. Although, however, Scarlet does have a lot of drones. So she didn't commit too early to defending that. So I think she is also in a pretty good position. That's true. And what I'm so scared for is the fact that there are Hydras out. And Hydras, uh, with good positioning, are the right counter, or the right response to a lot of gateway units. I mean, they're just so lean, they're cost-efficient. As long as you have those tanking units, whether they're Roaches, whether they're Zerglings, it's really fantastic. However, on Belshir Vestige, it's incredibly hard to be effective because of the ramps. Getting that surround means you can easily be isolated off, but look at this. A lot of sentries are going to go down here. That's about three, four... Four sentry four seals that just had died in the blink of an eye. And now units coming around to the third base. Going to try to aggress up. We'll see if it does any damage. Puck has a lot of sentries still in the yeah. field, though. I think if... He, oh, those are nice force fields, yeah, too. They sectioning are. off a lot of roaches and hydras. I think Puck can defend this if he, if he continues to force field well. Wow, and Scarlet is going all the way in there. Now fully sectioning everything off. The Immortals are going to be able to get good shots onto those roaches. Just slowly cutting back. Great micro coming out. From Puck. Look at that. Hydra's in the back, though, doing damage against that one low immortal, able to kill them, and Scarlet gets out of there, but severe losses. Let's take a look at both sides. It looks like 3,700 to 3,250. So I thought that actually went a lot better for Puck, but it looks like uh, he ended up losing a lot more. Yeah, although they were pretty good force builds, I think he let a bit too many units get next to the sentries, and I think that's where a lot of the resource lost tab comes from. Yeah, and you know, refueling in sentries is actually very costly, uh, especially right now. Pushing into the natural base, looking for a fight. Those hydras, man, oh man, are they so scary. Again, great sectioning. But how are you going to deal with those hydralists that are approaching? Uh, doing a lot of good damage now, taking the fourth base, and the hydras are going to directly engage against sentries. That is not a position that you want to be in. Warpins getting in here. Look at this, Scarlet is targeting the warped in units. They have the lowest health, obviously. You can just eliminate them incredibly fast. This can was still a good engagement for Puck, though, I feel. Although he lost some sentries, I don't think he could have done too much better than that, given the position. Yeah, I, I mean, the the trades normally work out better for, for Zerg, but it just depends on uh, cost efficiency, of course, and the fact that 
you know, he is, excuse me, Scarlet is losing a lot, a lot of those roaches and hydras. The roaches are pretty necessary to tank the damage, especially on such a force field heavy map. The Spire has been placed down. The fourth base uh, is starting to accrue a little bit of resources. Warp Prism over here in the mid right hand position, potentially putting on a little pressure. Vault Scarlet is trying to pressure the natural and the third base. But yes, uh, things are getting a little dicey, I would say. I would say that I actually like Puck's position a lot right now, though. Scarlet with that Spire, it's not going to be too useful. She's obviously not using it for Mutalisk because she has almost no gas bank. It's just for mm -hmm. protection against Colossi. But we see no Colossi in the way. And the supply for Puck has actually got pretty high. And does he have Blink now? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. I, yes, he does yeah, have Blink. Yeah, he does have Blink. So with Blink, this supply, if he has good sectioning of the army again, I think his army is better than Scarlet's right now. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, of course, Scarlet needs that perfect surround, and here the force fields pop Good out force here. force field so far. Look at how many Hydras can't attack anything in the back there. Yeah, this is a really, really bad engagement for Scarlet, but it might just be too much. As soon as these force fields kind of elapse, it's going to open the floodgate, but it looks like Scarlet just pops back all the way into the natural base, taking out the next upgrade. I believe that was plus three. However, if Puck can manage to kill these Stalkers, that's a big catch. That's a lot of Stalkers. You don't want to be losing about 15 of them, or 15 Hydras this early in the game. And I think Scarlet, I think all oh. these Hydras are going down. Yeah, they are. You can't escape with against Blink Stalkers, even with the Hydra with speed. Things are looking pretty good all of a sudden for Puck. 161 supply to 152 in favor of the Protoss. The Warp Prism was not able to be picked out here. Um, the one thing that Scarlet has going for her, I would say, is the creep. Still, I don't think it's going to help too much. I think Puck's going to engage by the fourth base, and there's not actually that much creep going out from this location. And it's kind of choked up. I think as Scarlet, she wants to get some Hydras in the high ground and try to shoot yes. down on him from there. Yes. But it's still going to be difficult. When the Protoss has this close of supply to Zerg, and the Protoss has this many Blink Stalkers, it can be tough if there's good micro. That's and right. look at all these Blink Stalkers. Feels like it. the health pool is invincible just because you blink back the Stalkers, and those Stalkers, as soon as they come into rotation, they have full hit points yet again. Scarlet now it's actually down in supply now, too. Yeah. And when you're down in supply against this many Blink Stalkers, if Protoss micros properly, I feel like Zerg has no chance. Scarlet's doing it right, though, by getting the good concave overall, but a big blink is going to isolate all the, the eastern flank, and now the west tried to push up, but it's a little bit too late. This is perfect for Puck. 155 supply to 125, warping in one more sentry. I'm not sure why. Yeah, I don't think the sentry is necessary <laughs> now. Once you kind of lose your sentries, there's not much point in warping more in because they'll start with almost no energy, and you exactly. can't section too much off unless you have enough force fields anyway. I mean, so. 50, 50 energy isn't going to do that much for 100 gas. And there it is, the second round of Stalkers now pushing in. Uh, the third base is going to be, well, I mean, this is just so many Stalkers. Yeah, this is tough. You actually, against Blink Stalkers, I don't think you can kill them if you're at a supply no. deficit. You unless you have, like, a lot of Infestors or something like that. Yeah, you absolutely can't. And Puck looking to clean out this game number two on Belshire Vestige. It is his map, I feel. Uh, taking out every single drone in a very familiar position that he sees all the time, killing every single up. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. But victory goes to Root Puck.